Hold on there. I gotta sign you in. Don't think I've seen you around. That means you must be new to Stellar Bay. You are new here, right? Well, spit and sulfur. Mr. Sanjar keeps me posted at this landing pad, so I don't hardly know anything about what goes on in town. Still, you're here now, and that means I finally get to do this part. Okay, here goes. On behalf of Monarch Stellar Industries, welcome to Stellar Bay, home of the freshest sal tuna in Halcyon. Please state your name for the records. Swell. There's one for the logs. I'm even gonna give you your own entry code. I'm not supposed to do that. It's against procedure, but Mr. Sanjar isn't so strict about the rules here. Besides, I got a lot of empty entries to fill. Oh, that'll just make Mr. Sanjar's day if you tell him. The board makes up lots of nasty stories about raptodons and cannibals and whatnot. But that's all outside our walls, mostly. Oh, sure. It makes Stellar Bay sound like a rotten place, but it's not so bad. Get a good breeze going and the sulfur smell mostly covers up the fishy smell. Anyway, Mr. Sanjar's got lots to say on that subject. Kinda goes over my head, though. Mr. Sanjar will be mighty pleased to meet you. If you see him over at headquarters, maybe you could tell him I did a bang-up job of welcoming you? Oh, and if you're headed that way, maybe you could do me a favor? I got this Rizzo's Rangers Tossball poster coming in on the next sublight shipment, signed by the Black Hole himself. Only I haven't heard anything in a while. You think you could check with Celia to see if it's come in? Thanks a bunch. Celia works for Mr. Sanjar in the MSI building next to the bar. She's always there, so you can't miss her. Mr. Nandi? Just make sure... Greetings, and welcome to Monarch Stellar Industries, producers and purveyors of the finest salt tuna in Halcyon. What can I do for you today? You know, sending you is the first bright idea I've seen from that man, because I told him to stop bothering me about it a week ago. I still don't know anything about it, but if you want to help him, Velma's the one to ask. She's in the warehouse. But I'll warn you, Grim wore her patience thin a long time ago. Not at all. Mr. Nandi treats us all right and pays us well. I just spent most of my paycheck on a on acid. Laws, no. Sometimes it's canid teeth or mantis warm wings. Whatever Sebastian has in stock, really.
Oh, I don't need any of it. It's also I can talk to Sebastian. He doesn't get going about much else. Sort of the strong, silent type. Unfortunately, my apartment's kind of filling up with his stuff. And some of the neighbors are complaining about the smell. Would you? I'd appreciate that so much. Uh, maybe don't tell him I wanted you to ask. Just that you met this really nice lady named Celia, and she seemed... Oh, Mr. Nandi's doing that thing where he breathes through his nose real slowly. I'd better get back to work. Well, new business turns up at last. Celia, didn't I tell you our new statistics-based advertising model would be a hit? That you did, sir. How can yield improvements of 26.7% not quicken the pulse? How can 32% cost savings not moisten the loins? You've often posed these very questions. Clear my schedule. This newcomer has a meeting with me. Celia, will you make a note of that for my self-review? Very generous. Noted. But not so generous I can't drive a good bargain. Now, who sent you? Rizzo's, perhaps? Or Auntie Cleo herself? What a charming notion. One doesn't meet many free spirits in Alcyon. Not outside Tartarus prison, anyway. Forgive me, I'd be positively enraptured. Only, I take it this means you aren't here for Saltuna. Now, now, there's no need to humor me. I'm used to this particular letdown. I had hoped that livening up our advertisements with enticing figures would draw the other corporations back to our bosom, but it seems we're back to the drawing board. Thanks to the so-called hazard clause, Monarch has been cut off from the board's resources and protection for ten years now. So-called is right. We've got our hazards, but we're still here, damn it. The board took off without so much as a thought for the folks left behind. Now, we've kept ourselves in business by trading with individual corporations, but given the off-the-books nature of those transactions, such arrangements are precarious. Yes, freedom is a tempting ideal, but a rather costly paramour. Well, Mr. Nandi here has a rather ingenious plan to get MSI restored to the board. On our terms, mind you. A lot of good that'll do. I'll just find another reason to turn tail and abandon you. Not if we secure the proper safeguards first. And if our advertising scheme hasn't borne fruit? then perhaps it's time we took matters into our own hands. It's true, our Celia is an alarmingly competent middle manager. At any other company, she'd be wasted in data entry. The plan she refers to is a two-pronged approach, and the first part involves seeing Stellar Bay properly defended. With a Bolt 52 cartridge, of course. If you can get us what we need to rejoin the board, starting the Bolt 52, we'll be able to become one of the most productive and secure cities in Halcyon. And you'll have a powerful ally on the board. In the old arms building southwest of town, which used to be part of Stellar Bay before we had to move our walls in, 
These days it's overrun with marauders and raptodons. Do be careful. I've lost more than a few people to marauders and raptodons out there. Oh, and while you're at it, there should be a terminal in the arms building with some dangerous information. Perhaps you could delete it so it doesn't fall into the wrong hands. What's up? Oh, uh, sure, Cap. Let me know if you want some company, if I ain't blacked out. It smells like rat here.
out there. Wait, can I have your boots? Probably. I don't know. When I try to read things, my mind gets to wandering about all the things I could be doing instead. Get me out of here!
thank you so much. It was getting all stuffy in there, and I was getting a mite lightheaded, and I think maybe I was gonna die. Now I'm out here, and I'm headed back to Amber Heights. Oh, sure, I'm a runner. I'm used to getting all dizzy, and <laughs> hey, who's your identical, slightly blurry friend? Thanks a lot, mister. Hold on. What happens if we hit the wall? There's a tiny chance of a hull puncture. Rockets into space one chunk at a time. Bad and hilarious. Yeah. And Timing, Captain. I was about to watch the latest episode in Halcyon Helen's thrilling serial adventure. Welcome back, Captain. How can I be of assistance? Certainly, Captain. I was hoping you would ask. was the law forsaken parasites. I had become obsessed. My quest to stop them. To avenge my partner, Philip. And my ex-partner, Bernice. And Lieutenant Jurgen. And those two informants had brought me to Rizzo's distillery. 
But it wasn't just the triple distilled deliciousness of Rizzo's Spectrum brand vodka that I found there. It was death. I made sure the Brain Eaters paid the price. But at what cost to me? Communication coming in from one Administrator Ludovico. Get off the transmission, Cedric. We agreed to let me do the negotiating. Law be with you, friend. I am Administrator Ludovico of the famed Eridanos Atmospheric Complex. But there's no need to stand on formality. You may address me as Mr. Halcyon Helen is dead, murdered. Her death is the tragedy of our lifetime. As the face of our new product line, her murder is a stain on the Rizzo's brand. She was scheduled to unveil our newest product, Spectrum Brown, before this tragic event. But we cannot move forward with our unveiling until we apprehend the killer. All right, Ludovico, that's enough. You don't know what you're doing. Let me handle this. Captain Hawthorne, so glad to finally have a word with you. I would have been so disappointed if Ludovico monopolized your attention. Cedric Kincannon, Sublight Underground. I'm so glad we're hiring a third-party investigator. No one wants to see a troop of UDL guards stomping all over my hotel. Least of all me. The murder of Halcyon Helen is a heinous assault on this colony. I look forward to watching you find the miscreant responsible and drag them out of the shadows. You're a compassionate person, Captain. And you're right. Halcyon Helen was a talented woman. She had a gift for transforming her art into wealth. You would not believe the money she made us on Dissident Busters. For law's sake, Cedric, could you show a little discretion and not bring up your contraband operations in front of an outsider? Ludovico, you wound me. I'm establishing rapport with our new contractor. Let's not give him the impression that you can't be trusted. Do you really want to do this right now, Cedric? You want to antagonize me while I'm negotiating a contract. Because I promise you, I'll win. We can do this anytime you want. I'll even make an appointment. I'm sure your schedule's wide open. What with your product launch being indefinitely delayed due to unforeseen murder all right cedric if that's how you want to behave i have no choice but to file an official reprimand on your permanent record oh please do i'd love an official reprimand from a failed executive could you do me a favor and have it laminated could we please stop this nonsense captain i'm constable maria Keene. hiring a third-party investigator was my idea I've been studying your dossier. You're a talented diplomat. You know how to ask questions, and you have a gift for getting answers without resorting to violence. As far as I'm concerned, you're the ideal inspector for this case.
I'm pleased to hear that. The future of our complex may depend on your success. I'll leave you in the constable's care. Mr. Kincannon and I must have a word. Fine. Bud Rizzo's is paying for that hotel room. I can't tell you how grateful I am for your help. And even though they may not show their gratitude, I know Administrator Ludovico and Mr. Kincannon appreciate your involvement. Mr. Kincannon could lose his spaceport if board authorities took over the investigation. And if Rizzo's is forced to cancel its unveiling, we might never recover. Transmission terminated. Captain, we are now cleared to land at the Eridanos Atmospheric Complex. Eridanos is a hydrogen-helium gas giant, distinguished by a well-defined ring system. The Eridanos Atmospheric Complex is a system of land masses propelled through a thin layer of the upper atmosphere where humans are potentially capable of surviving.
I hear those rich people in Byzantium pay a handsome bit for wrapped musk. Hey, Velma, I got your caffeinoid pills. Look, you can tell Catherine the new shipment will be ready when it's ready, all right? She's welcome to come up here and pack boxes herself if she's in such a hurry. Sorry, seems I got my cables crossed. Thought you were another shakedown tough from Fallbrook. Hope you can forgive my temper. This job has been running me ragged lately. First, my autoloader foreman stages a walkout, and now my chief pescatological health manager is missing. This again? I swear, this is the last time I contract for any special requests. You can tell Grimm his poster came in. You can also tell him I got a better offer for it. So now it's going to now. That about cover it? It's staying locked up in my office until Nell shows with her money. She runs the bedding parlor across the way. Nice professional lady. She asked me about the poster once. Just once. Made a real generous offer, too. Damn right it is. No, I paid Sublight for it, so it's mine. And when Nell pays me for it, it'll be hers. Grim may have asked for the poster, but it's not his until I take his money. Sure can, if you want to pay me more than Nell's offering. I got a feeling you and Catherine would get on like tumors on a pig. Take the poster then, and if I never hear another word about it, it'll be too soon. Something else on your mind? Braxton. He's in charge of getting the fish fat, but also making sure they don't get too many tumors. He's a real wizard with pharmaceuticals, but he has creative notions of working hours. Comes with living in a free colony, I guess. Since you don't seem to be constrained yourself, maybe you could check up on him. He lives in the apartments. Tell him Velma said to get his lazy ass down here, or she might start noticing those extra drugs he's been taking from supply. Stealing's such a nasty word. Let's call it skimming. And yeah, let's just say I've noticed the sterobiotics we use for the fish would get used a little faster on Braxton's shifts. We're not like those corporate towns where you get fined for sleeping on the wrong side of the bed. Besides, the Spacer's Choice stuff we use is cheap enough. And Braxton knows how to get the salt tuna, fat, and mostly tumor-free. Caleb Herrick runs the autoloader operators. He thinks I don't pay them enough for flipping switches and turning dials. He and his whole crew walked out. Say they won't come back unless I pay them more. Because we've got a budget, all right? And in case you haven't noticed, MSI doesn't exactly have a lot of spare bits on hand. You mind slapping him around a little while you're at it? I'm joking. Mostly. Unless you can do it without hurting his job performance. 
If you can find a way to get him back to work, I'll make it worth your while. Check the Yacht Club. He's usually there. Unless you're here to tell me... Hard workers? They turn... Caleb and his crew have it better than anyone else. I don't have the bits for it. Besides, if I make an exception... If Caleb wants to keep this job, he'd better get back to it. For running me ragged while he takes an extended leave at the bar? Not on your life. Fine by Have you had time to check on that poster yet? I keep wondering if it's come in. Would you look at that? The Rizzo's logo is nice and bright, and you can still smell the ink on Mr. Holcomb's signature. I can't thank you enough. Still, you can have the bits I was gonna spend at the bar this week. And you know what? Take my old toss ball blocker too. Never get the chance to use it these days. New face, huh? You from Offworld? A ship captain? Well, I'll be. Here, let me buy you a drink. Consider it an MSI welcome. Why don't you grab a chair? Sit a spell and revel with us. Sure thing. What did you want to discuss?
Not forever, but we've each saved up our bits, and I stashed them safe in my home by the diner. I reckon we could last a week or two at least. Nope. I'm calling her bluff. If she wants to threaten us, we'll see how she likes it when Sanjar finds out she gave Sublight even more dominion in Stellar Bay. I never meant to call for anyone's head on a pike. Velma's not my favorite person, but she ain't been cruel to us. Devil it all. Now you got me feeling sorry for her. Fine. I guess we'll go back to work to save Velma's job. We'll find a better time to negotiate our wages. Tell Velma not to worry. We'll look out for her. Seem out of sorts to you. She's always cranky. Whatever you do, don't lose your heart. You'll never hear the end of it. You know, I haven't seen you in a while. If you got me stuck in an hour long rant about mostly calling us, we'd be thankful. You startled me. Don't sneak up on a person like that, huh? Braxton. I've never even heard of a Braxton. Got nothing for you, sorry. Oh, in that case, he told me he was delivering to this house in the ruins south of town. Whole family had fallen sick and he had some meds on hand. So, maybe look for him there?
Will someone help me? My boys and... Oh, thank you for stopping. Everyone acts like nothing's wrong. Like my little boy isn't at risk of being eaten by some vile creature. Please, you have to help me get my little Tucker back. He ran away and is going to get himself killed. Oh, I, I just know a raptodon is melting him with acid as we speak. Oh, I just knew you were a good person. Agnes, I said, this is the man to save your little Tucky. And I was right. He ran out into the wilderness a few days ago. I warned him about the raptodons, mantisaurs and marauders, the toxic sulfur pools and poisonous plants, but he didn't listen. Please, won't you go and find my boy? Thank you. Oh, I know he'll be safe now that someone's able to fetch him home. You look for him in Amber Heights, you hear? It's down the road southwest of town. I'm sure he made it that far. I just know it. And if you find any of them iconoclast indoctrinating my boy, you punch them in the mouth. Tell them what I think of them luring little boys away from their mamas. It's immoral. Visitor? What an unexpected surprise! Please, come in. Come in. I'm afraid we don't get many visitors out here. The Raptodons and Marauders scare off all but the boldest. And if you've braved them, you must be exhausted. Why don't you stay for dinner? I'm sure I would remember something like that. Now, quit fretting yourself about that. Make yourself at home. Dinner's almost ready. Oh, hello there. Sorry, I'm not real good with, um, names. It just gets hard to remember things. I recall other times it's like there's fog. I... Sorry, have we talked about this before? That's nice of you. I usually feel better after I eat. Mama said dinner's almost ready, huh? What a pleasant surprise. And just when I was beginning to fear we'd seen the last of good company for a spell. Yet the Eternal provides, does it not? And who could? Stretch out your hand and cosmic divinity reaches back. Open wide your mouth and the universe provides sustenance. That they do. Though it's up to us to make the most of those opportunities, wouldn't you say? Look at me, prattling on as if this gravy is going to cook itself. Why don't you run along until we are ready for dinner? Oh, hi there. Did you come to bring us more of those rocket candies?
You know, the ones that come in a bottle with a rocket ship on the front. They don't taste very good, but they make me feel so nice. Hungry, too. But what's this? You're tracking blood into the kitchen. Oh dear. You've been nosy, haven't you? Of course not. What better end for the day than a meal around the family table? And what more noble purpose for you than to bring us together? Did you hear that, Martha? Threatening our family in our own home. It's very rude. Time to teach you some manners. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>
Sounds like wrapped in here. Oh, it does work. I'd give you a friendlier welcome, but I'm up to my elbows and salt tuna guts. That he's got his load on and I'm stuck covering his shift? That's... Wow. I sure feel like an ass now. Oh, sure. Because Monarch's just teeming with experts in the finer points of salt tuna health. Still, it's good to know what happened to him. And that I ought to start looking for a replacement. Something else on your mind? You knocked any sense into him yet? Well, that's... awful nice of him. Sure wouldn't have expected that. Thanks for your help. You've gotten me out of a tight spot here. Take this for your efforts. Honest work deserves honest pay. Stealing such a nasty and besides, the spacer sh or sublight boss out of Fallbrook handles most goods that come in or out of Cellar Bay. Has a mouth like a ground. You're the new face. Wow, you must be up on all the latest tossball games. So who do you follow? Wait, don't tell me. You look like a Hammersmith Thunder fan. No, Glacial H Manix. Aren't they just? When I get to worrying about the marauders outside, the raptodons chewing at the walls, I just turn my transceiver up to drown it all out. Most of the time it's static on account of the frequency being clogged up, but sometimes it's toss ball. So, what can I do for you? Poor Isaac. I was wondering why I hadn't seen him in a few days. I'd really like to help. Isaac was a sweet fellow, even if he did have terrible teeth. Right, so the thing with Isaac is he didn't know where to stop. He'd get stuck on something, and he just couldn't let it go. Sometimes he'd drink Purpleberry Punch by the leader, other times he'd keep betting on a losing team, started owing the wrong people money. I don't know for sure, but I saw Elijah and his buddies pushing Isaac around. They're hooligans from Fallbrook. They sweep into town, drop supplies off behind the warehouse, and spend the rest of their stay getting rowdy over tossball games. They usually loiter in the alley behind the yacht club, 
They're not allowed in the bar anymore. I bet you anything Isaac ran into trouble with one of them. Mr. Sanjar will be pleased to hear about it when you're done. I know he gets fed up with the Fallbrook bullies, but there's not much he can do. What are the chances of all the times and places we could have been born? Yeah. We're here, light years from Earth, going about our lives. Sorry, I thought you were quoting, it's a wonderful directory. Who the fuck are you? This ain't your alley. Hey, what are you doing here? This is our secret alley. Berta already pissed by those crates to market. Listen, that purple tooth twerp had it coming. Not that anyone has proof. And not that it's any of your business. Oh yeah? What are you saying exactly? Wow. Most of the pencil pushers around here cave as soon as you look at them funny. Fine. We're going. This ain't worth it. for you. Oh, yes. I'm going to be up all night with this. All those blanks waiting to be filled, boxes waiting to be ticked. Try to control yourself, sir. Have you any idea how powerful this is? Corporations have been toppled with less. Exactly what this is. The world isn't changed with guns and speeches, much as Graham and his followers would like to think, but rather with meticulous documentation. And the bill of liquidation slash transfer form 52 is one of the most formidable pieces of data entry in all of Halcyon. One false stroke can invalidate the entire document. It's true. One of the old execs gave herself a stroke trying to fill out the exemption section.
For our part, a bill of liquidation slash transfer form 52 will protect our holdings on Monarch by temporarily assigning them to a pass-through entity once we drop our bomb on the board. Sort of. Really, we're just going to blackmail them into offering us a seat at the table. But really, whatever gets you excited about the idea, it's definitely a firm middle finger. That's what I like to hear. I have reason to believe that one of the other corporations is operating on Monarch, illegally and in secret. If we can find proof, I can use that as leverage to... Encourage certain powers that be to accept our Bolt 52 and reinstate us on the board. You really think so? I admit I've been hatching this scheme for quite some time. I just needed someone capable to help me carry it out. If someone is operating here, then Catherine's almost certainly supplying them out of Fallbrook. Perhaps she could be convinced to tell you where they are. Oh, I imagine you do. But as much as I love your can-do attitude and dangerous gravitas, Catherine handles all of our shipments. So it would be best if you could leave her in one piece. Is that how you people put it? Once you, uh, subtly work out where this corporate facility might be, bring back proof of its operation. Maybe some nice letterhead. Or someone working there. That would do it. <laughs> I knew you were the right person for the job. I suppose I'll leave you to it. That's terrible. What happened? I'm glad to hear you've dealt with them. They've been causing quite a bit of trouble around town. I've been consumed with other matters of late, but I would have dealt with them eventually. Of course I would have. Still, your intervention in the matter is much appreciated. Please consider this payment for your services. I see. And was his delivery of the MSI authorized greeting up to snuff? Well, that's excellent. I'll see that your feedback makes it into his review. What else can I do for you? You weren't supposed to look. I asked you to delete it. Yes. No doubt someone else was having a laugh at my expense before you. This has been my albatross. The great shame of my career. I give MSI everything. My work, my youth, my left kidney, and for years, I was a joke to them. In charge of a scrap heap of a city. Abandoned by the board and surviving only through the hypocrisy of our trading partners. I hadn't thought of it that way. But perhaps there's something to that. Thank you for that. Was there something else? Have you talked to Sebastian yet? What did he say?
Hello, stranger. Can I interest you in a raptodon tongue? Or maybe some canid toenails? You look like a man who's looking for some mostly fresh animal parts? Huh. I haven't seen her in a few days. But I've been meaning to ask her how that raptodon acid is working out. I hope it's working okay, because no one else really seems interested in this stuff. Wait, I see what's going on. She put you up to this so she could get a discount, hmm? Don't get me wrong, I'd like to give her a discount. She's a real fine lady, always talks nice and slow, so I understand. But if I give her one, I won't hardly make a bit, on account of no one else having any use for raptodon tongues. You sound pretty sure. And she is awful nice. Okay, I'll do it. Once her shift ends, we'll go someplace nice. Maybe to Chef Raymond's. Have you talked to Sebastian yet? What did he say? Okay. But how did he say it? Did he sound excited? Or like he was just agreeing to it? Was he like, yay, a date with Celia. I've secretly been waiting for this. Or was it more, sure, I don't have anything else going on. Not to worry. If I never buy another raptodon tongue, it'll be too soon. Ah, look at me going on. I'm sure you've got other things to do, and Mr. Nandi's giving me that back-to-work look. Anyhow, thank you. Huh? Gonna find you!
Trouble checking in? Or you might need directions to the amenities? If you're locked out of your cabin, a replacement key costs 50 bits. seen Arthur today? Uh-huh. You blind, fella? Or can you not see I'm busy? Why is it every sissy pig fucker who strolls into my town expects me to smile and shout awful friendly? Welcome to Fallbrook. Only nugget of paradise in this entire law-forsaken land. Like a void damn advert. You know, I ain't heard that one before. Suppose I'll have to work harder to show you just what makes our town shine. But first, I'll need to know what brings you, stranger. Well, I'm half listening. Might be I know something about it. Might be someone hired my crew to blind drop supplies on the Northern Bridge. Might be they sure as shit weren't pirates. Now that I consider it, I ain't heard from my delivery team in far too long. Find them for me, and I'll pay you handsomely. And I'll thank you kindly for it. If it's one that don't mind getting dirty, and I sure do. But how am I to know whether you're reliable, if not fully trustworthy? Against my better judgment, I do believe you. There's a Borst factory on up the way, run by a man who calls himself the King. Clive Lundberg, insufferable prick. That aside, it's a business ripe for the plucking. I want it. Clear as that. Stars, I hope so. Clive Lundberg, the self-proclaimed Borst King of Monarch, is swimming in profit and drowning in his ego. He's making the only meal to be had this side of Monarch, and I'm tired of ponying up for my dinner. I want that Borst factory, owner dead or alive. And you're the soon-to-be handsomely paid son of a bitch who's gonna get it for me. Kill him, run him out. I don't rightly care for the details. So long as Clive knows resistance to me is costly and futile. Hit him where it hurts, in his gut or his production lines ought to make do. Then I'd say you might care to poison the sisty pigs, doctor a few financial records, or throw a wrench in the canning machinery. It'll be more than good when you're finished. Maybe not for Clive, but for me and you, I'm sure. Oh, and if you don't fancy going in guns blazing or crawling through a sewer pipe, see Duncan in the dry goods and sundry building. He ought to have an employee ID in that stash of illicit goods he keeps for select clientele. May luck be with you, since I won't be.
My dry goods come 75% guaranteed mold-free. Oh, was that 75% mold-free? Hmm. No rubbernecking. Make a buy or move on. Not so fast. The biometric IDs are special goods. Only on offer to special clients. You cotton? She needs it for a job? Well, why didn't you say so? Reckon you asked her where to best procure one, and she obligingly pointed you my way. Give me a jiffy to break. I, I mean, calibrate the ID. This goes like that. Nope, not quite right. A bit to the left, mayhaps. That'll do it. For a CMP factory line worker, she sure is a beauty. Careful. I'm trusting you to guard this specialty good with your life. I mean it. Lose the ID and you don't get another. Also, you'll be off my list of unwholesome customers. Will that be all, or do you require something to say, scratch your itch? No refunds, no exchanges, no returns. And no whining about it either. If you bloody it, you buy it. Store policy. You shopping for Priya?
I offer high qual few bloody.
must be a part of the new line shift. Don't tell me you lost your key card already. A lost card's worth two infractions, you know. tend to entail. Reminder, poor uniform maintenance will result in citation. Expect it. What was that? Not so fast. Thank <laughs> you. 
whoa now. And just what do you figure you're doing up here? These are my private quarters, friend. I don't allow tours up here. I don't allow tours ever on deeper consideration. Right. On account of, <clears throat> seeing as I ain't ever approved one, so as my way of saying welcome, I must ask you, what in the blackest hole would possess you to traipse into my office? Uninvited, unannounced, propelled, no doubt, by some form of death wish. By sublight, you mean Catherine, do you not? That greedy, star-crossed sow. Listen, friend. The Borst King of Monarch does not negotiate with coveters. How about... You bring me Catherine's severed head, and I will gift you a lifetime supply of Borst. You desire that I should lower myself to Catherine's level of crassness and filth? I cannot fathom how that would cotton myself. The king built this golden monopoly brick by brick from the rubble when the corpse abandoned Monarch. No, he ain't the sort to partner up, as that requires the sharing of power and profits. According to whom? No. I don't see the advantage. Never mind. Never I should mind. I will never you write up your dark. <clears throat> I listen, friend. The Borst King of Monarch does not. See that you do, friend.
already dead. Not not. Please say the Oda corpse you're wearing is Clive's. <clears throat> Not much boast to that declaration. Am I to take that to mean you didn't kill him? You ain't wrong, but I prefer a man of vice myself. Still, this ought to compensate for your troubles. And take an aromatic. You stink like Sisty Pig. I take it you don't have a reservation. No matter. I keep a suite of VIP rooms for visitors of your... Let's call it a certain means. The VIP rooms charge by the night. But for you, I'll make it a one-time fee. Got a feeling you'll make me a fine investment. Marvelous. Do take care of the place. Maid service won't clean after a murder. If I may be so bold.
If I may be so bold. Hmm? Huh? What was that? Hello there. A word, if I may be so bold? Well, now, wait a minute. I still hear those sores crying across the way. 
How is it you're here and they're still alive? Evidently so, stranger. I don't suppose you'd mind stopping a minute and helping me out? Those beasts don't seem to want to leave. I'm of the mind they need forceful convincing. Ah, blessed silence at last. I appreciate the assistance. Name's Weston. Every once in a while, I set up a shop along these here roads. If you find yourself in need of resupply, you come on by. Care to purchase a thing or two? Thanks again. Care to purchase a thing or two?
stay back. I may be wounded, but I'm still armed. How'd you get past my traps anyway? Just remember, I still got bullets, in case you get any funny ideas. What are you doing out here anyway? That feels a mite better. Wish I had something to give you, but I gnawed through my last Spratwurst an hour ago. Nice to know she cares. Catherine had us making drops for some big shot client out here. And before you ask, I don't know who they are. Or were. The whole point of making drops in the middle of nowhere was to keep their identity and whereabouts a secret. The Marauders knew we were coming. Rigged the bridge with explosives and everything. If they found us, my guess is they found the client too. Last I saw, they were heading back up the hill. You'll see it on the right when you get out of here. If you've got the sand to go after him, I'm sure Catherine can reward you for your trouble. Me? I'm headed back to Fallbrook just as soon as I've caught my breath.
humidity is really uncomfortable. Look, no, I didn't mean what I said about your outfit. It's very fashionable, I swear. <laughs>